Hello my sharing friends. So today we're going to dive deeper into the dreaded subject for a lot of us and that is the topic of the sleeve. Today we're going to draft this sleeve which is a very basic straight one piece sleeve that at the end is going to look like this. Pretty straightforward and pretty simple, right? It truly is, I promise you. So you will see how we're going to go about it. And that is going to be drafted for the basic dartless bodice block that we made a couple of weeks ago. So that way you will have a finished top and the sleeve all together. Now, I really want for this video to explain some basic moments of the relationship between the sleeve and the armhole and hopefully give you some basic understanding of what the sleeve consists from and how to work with it further. There are many methods how to go about drafting a sleeve. There are many types of the sleeve as well. I do like this very simple method that gives you this very basic but very nice fitting sleeve that then you can use for a variety of different styles and and for a variety of different garments by modifying this basic sleeve. So I truly hope that this video gives you the understanding of what the sleeve is all about and how to work with those measurements. So let's get started. Now, first of all, it is really important to understand that the shape of the sleeve is actually composed out of three elements. Number one, of course, your body measurements. It has to fit, right? Number two, the style of the sleeve, whether it's just a straight sleeve or a puff sleeve or a lantern sleeve or a bishop sleeve or any other style of the sleeve out there. And number three is the actual garment and the mobility of that garment as well. The mobility of a tailored suit jacket is going to be very different than a mobility of, let's say a sports jacket. You have probably noticed that if you're wearing a really nice tailored suit jacket, you can't really move your arms in it that much. But if you're wearing a sports item or sports sports garment, you can move in it all the way around. So of course, the shape of the sleeve is going to be different from one garment to another garment. Now here's the trick. You can also determine the level of mobility in the garment by the height of the cap of the sleeve. The higher is the cap of the sleeve, which this one is quite high, the less is the level of mobility of your garment. The lower is the cap height of the sleeve, the more you can move your arm around. So this one is quite high. If we take about two thirds, you will have about mid height. If you take about one third, you will have a low cap height sleeve. Now, to get started on drafting, of course, you will need some measurements. Grab your measuring tape. You can also put on your bodice block on yourself as well, so that way you can clearly determine where is the edge of your shoulder, so that way you measure precisely. Because a lot of times, mistakes are made not in the drafting, but actually in the measuring of ourselves. If we take the wrong measurement, of course, we're going to get a garment that doesn't fit right. So take your measuring tape, place it on the edge of your shoulder, and this is how we're going to measure it. You're going to start at the shoulder seam of your garment or your bodice block, then in a slightly bent position like this, you're going to measure it on the back side, going through the elbow, and then you're going to end your measurement right at the wrist. For this next measurement, we're going to measure your upper arm, which is usually also your widest part of the arm. So go ahead and measure it like so, and you want to measure the circumference of it. Now that we have all those measurements, let's get started with the drafting of our sleeve. First goes the measurement that you took from the edge of your shoulder all the way to your wrist. Now here it is. I'm drawing a long line that goes right in the middle of my pattern paper. There we go. Now the next measurement that we want to put on the bottom of this line is going to be your upper arm circumference plus two inches. And you will distribute this measurement evenly on one side and on the other side of this line. Once that is done, go ahead and place two marks, one on each side, that is two inches away from the edge of each of the lines. So two inches in on one side and on the other side. Now, the question that I think you might be asking is, why didn't we take your wrist circumference and add one inch of ease on each side and use that as the measurement for the bottom of the sleeve? And the answer is that usually you give your wrist a lot more ease than just one inch on each side. So that way you can really easily move and that way you can also pull up your sleeve a little bit as well as you move around, especially in the sleeves like this. So before we move on to the next step, so that way we don't have to double check ourselves later, go ahead and measure this distance on your pattern 
imagine that there's two inches here and two inches here. So you're going to measure this distance with your measuring tape and then you're gonna put it around your wrist and you want to make sure that there is enough space for you to move and that it actually fits really nicely around your sleeve in terms of added ease. And of course, you can increase or decrease the width of the sleeve at your wrist so that way you truly get the most comfortable fit for you. Now we're going to move on to the top of the sleeve and here you will need either your garment or the pattern for which you're making the sleeve and here's why. The relationship between the height of the cap of your sleeve is directly related to the armhole of the garment from which you're making that sleeve. You also need to make sure that the garment that you are making the sleeve for or the pattern block is not drop shoulder and also is not a sleeveless top because then you will need to definitely extend the shoulder seam to the edge of the shoulder. What you're going to do is you're going to take your measuring tape and you're actually going to measure the whole armhole from the top of the shoulder seam of the front all the way to the top of the shoulder seam of the back. It's easier if you lay them down like this where they touch at the side seam so that way you can measure them all in one go. Now I already have my armhole lengths recorded right over here so what you're going to do is you're going to take the front and the back armholes, you're going to sum them together and you're going to divide them by three. All right, so for an example and for easy calculations, let's say your back armhole is 11 inches and your front armhole is 10 inches, which is usually about right because your front armhole is usually smaller than your back armhole. I get 21 inches divided by three is seven inches and that's what you will mark right here. Usually I add about a quarter of an inch to that measurement just because I do think it gets you a better fit. However, your cap height may be a little bit more or a little bit less than that. This measurement is not set in stone, but usually that's the proportion that you will get. The line that I'm drawing right over here is the same line as we draw on the bottom of our sleeve, which is your upper arm circumference plus two inches. And again, you're making sure that the distance on one side is equal to the distance on the other side of this line. Now for this next step, you're going to connect these lines right over here and you're going to create a triangle, which is really, really easy and really, really straightforward. So go ahead and connect those dots and create that triangle. And after that, we're going to do one of the last things that we will need before our sleeve is done. We're actually going to divide each side of this triangle into half. Now, once that is done, we're going to divide each one of these smaller distances in half as well. And that's what I'm doing right over here. All right, before we move forward, let's mark where is going to be our back and where is going to be our front. So for me, I want to make sure that this is going to be my front and the other side will be the back of my sleeve. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to raise some of the points and we're going to drop some of the points. The first one I'm dropping by 5 eighths of an inch with a perpendicular line like this. Then the middle point stays as it is. This one we're going to raise by 5 eighths of an inch. Again, perpendicular line, go ahead and mark it like this. The next point right across it, again, we're going to raise it by 5 eighths of an inch as well. And then the last bit, this little distance over here, divide in half again. And then that new point that you just got, you're going to drop it by 3 sixteenths of an inch. Like so. And now we need to connect all of these new points, making sure that we get a really nice curve of the sleeve. Now, if you do have a French curve, this is the perfect timing where to take it out and use it. If not, not a big deal. That's why I'm doing it by hand to show you that you can do it by hand without a problem at all. And you see how am I connecting these points as well. Once you are done with the pencil, you need to make sure that this line over here is actually a little bit larger than the total length of the front and the back armhole of your garment or your pattern. So you take your measuring tape and you put it on the edge or on the rib and you start measuring this curved line of your cap of the sleeve that you just made. So go ahead 
and write down how much is the front and then you want to do the same for the back and I'm doing it in two goes for the front and the back just because it's a little bit easier to handle your measuring tape that way you can certainly do that all in one go as well without a problem so you need to make sure that the total sum between the front and the back on your sleeve is about half an inch to two inches larger than the sum between the front and the back of your pattern. You might ask, why does it need to be larger? Well, we need a little bit of ease in the sleeve so that way it would fit really well and so that way it will extend the range of movement in your sleeve as well. Now, I will admit I don't like any ease in my sleeves at all, so I usually try to get it down to half an inch of ease in my woven sleeves. Now, here I have about three quarters of an inch of ease so my actual sleeve is three quarters of an inch larger than the actual armhole length of the pattern and that's going to be perfect for me if your ease is less or more than what you actually need or want then start by subtracting or adding to the cap height measurement of the sleeve and drawing a new curve and then measuring it again now before we cut our sleeve out, we need to connect these two points and create a side seam for our sleeve. And you will do exactly the same thing on one side and on the other side as you see me do on the screen right now. Once you have those lines done, go ahead and cut your sleeve from the pattern paper and we only have one last thing to do and then we can try it out. And the last thing for us to do is we need to mark the notches on the sleeve and on our pattern paper for the bodice as well. So for that, what you're going to do is you're going to take your measuring tape one more time and we're going to mark the notch on the back pattern piece first. So go ahead and take your measuring tape and you're going to measure the back armhole length and the front armhole length. And then we're going to place them on the front of the sleeve and the back of the sleeve. Since our sleeve is actually bigger, the measurement is not going to go all the way to the center of the sleeve. So here is my back armhole length on the sleeve and I'm marking it with this little point right over here. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for the front of the sleeve as well. I'm marking here the length of the front armhole and you can see me mark this measurement right over here so that way you can actually see. Now the distance between those two marks is actually the ease that you have in your sleeve. So take that measurement, divide it in half, and that notch that you're going to mark in the middle of that measurement is going to be where you will be matching your sleeve to the shoulder seam of your garment. Now my notch is just a little bit to the left from the actual center of the sleeve. Now yours might be a little bit further away and that's totally fine. So please don't be concerned about that. And the last thing that we need to do is to mark the notches on the back and the front of the sleeve that correspond with the front and the back of our pattern pieces of the bodice. For that, we'll be marking one third of each of the armhole measurements on both the back of the sleeve and the back of the pattern piece of the bodice. So here's one third of the back armhole measurement and you're going to do exactly the same on the front pattern piece as well. The back notches are always marked with two notches like so. And for the front, you're going to do just one notch. But again, you're marking one third of the front armhole length right over here on both the front of the sleeve and the front of the armhole and then you're going to make sure that you mark those notches with just one notch and then if you actually take your sleeve and you take your pattern and you align you will see that the curve of the sleeve and the bottom curve of the armhole of the bodice pretty much match and that's what you want you want to make sure that those notches match in a position so that way when you put your sleeve and your bodice together everything fits as desired now once all of that is done let's go ahead and cut your fabric and do the test run of the sleeve and the bodice put together please make sure that you add your seam allowances before you cut your fabric and the hem as well if you want to see the length of the hem or how the hem is going to be folded up so seam allowances and hem allowances need to be added to this pattern now you can see that i based mine by hand however you can do that on a sewing machine the preference is all yours
All right, and this is how the sleeve looks when it is on. I know it is a little bit difficult to see the fit due to the print of the fabric. However, this is what I had for my practice fabric, so that will do for now. I will make a garment based on the Darkless Bodice block and this sleeve, so you will see it in some of the next future videos, so definitely tune in for that. But as of this very moment, you can see the fit of the sleeve. It hangs quite nice. It doesn't have any puckers over here, as I said, I don't like a lot of ease in my sleeves. Um, it doesn't have any excess over here. The little bubble that I had at the uh, Darkless Bodice block over here at the bust, which in the previous tutorial I explained that's quite normal because obviously we're working with Darkless Bodice block and therefore you cannot expect the complete tight fit to the body. That little bubble of ease now went into the sleeve, so it looks quite nice. And overall, I'm really happy with the sleeve. Now here's one thing to mention. If you want your sleeve to be in with nothing, no puckers over here, everything to be completely, completely smooth, chances are you won't be able to lift your arm at all. So you definitely want to make sure that you have adequate ease in your bodice and in your sleeve as well so that way you can actually move your hand around and perform your daily activities without being restricted by your garment. Now, just a quick mention, if you are a member of this channel, which is a paid function, and I will leave the links for you guys in the info box below if you wanna check it out, then you do have instruction sheets available for you guys for the convenience and as a perk, as a thank you for joining the channel and helping me make these tutorials for you guys every week. So if you are a member, then you do have these instruction sheets available for drafting this sleeve and all of the other sewing and drafting tutorials on my channel. There's five pages in total for this particular drafting tutorial, and if you're Remember to find all of the perks that come with your membership, go to my channel page, just click on my channel name, and then go to the membership tab, and you will see all of the links to all of the perks right over there. Now, just to repeat it one more time, this part of the sleeve, this part of the sleeve needs to match the armhole with the ease added in onto the sleeve. So that way it would really fit. So if you want to take this principle and apply it to other garment, apply the principle, but chances are you won't be able to fit this exact sleeve to some other garment from which you did not take the measurements from the arm, if that makes sense. Well, dear sir and friends, thank you so much for watching. And I truly hope that this video gave you some insight between how the sleeve is created and what is this relationship between the sleeve and the armhole of the garment that you're creating it for because if you just make a sleeve out of nowhere you can't fit it into any other armhole it needs to be created for a particular garment so i truly hope that this was really useful if you want to see the video on how to create this dartless bodice block the video will be right over here and also in the info box below so i truly hope that you'll stick around watch some other videos and i'll see you in the next one really really soon Bye.